Lyme disease is not the only tick-borne illness Nova Scotians need to watch out for. Cases of anaplasmosis and infection spread by ticks have been steadily increasing. Ticks carrying the disease are primarily found in Nova Scotia, Quebec and Ontario. For more on this, we're joined by Heather Coatesworth, one of the Public Health Agency of Canada's top tick experts. So we've heard a lot, of course, about Lyme disease in recent years, but not so much about anaplasmosis. Can you first talk about what that is and the symptoms that arise from it? Yeah, so anaplasmosis is just like Lyme, a bacterial infection that's transmitted by the bite of a tick being attached to you and feeding on you for over 18 hours. And it infects white blood cells. So your common symptoms are actually going to be quite general and flu-like, um, kind of uh, not feeling too well, tiredness, and fever. Well, how does it compare to Lyme disease? So anaplasmosis, um, since it is more of a traditional blood disease, doesn't have that kind of long-term symptomology that we see often with Lyme. Um, with Lyme, you get kind of those lingering arthritic-like symptoms, and we don't tend to see that with anaplasmosis. Most cases resolve on their own. Um, however, some cases can be fatal or cause severe respiratory distress. Is it the same type of tick that transmits it or? Yep, the exact same uh, ticks, the primary ticks that transmit anaplasma are those same black-legged ticks that are associated with Lyme already. Um, so those exodes species ticks. Well, is there any reason why ticks carrying anaplasmosis are found in this province so much? So uh, Nova Scotia, Ontario, and Quebec are all kind of higher areas just based on high tick populations in general. They were kind of the first areas that had these Ixodi species ticks in Canada, and they've just had a bit more time to establish the population in these three provinces. Any parts of Nova Scotia that are more prone to tick problems? So generally speaking, most of Nova Scotia um, is kind of a hotbed for most ticks in general, especially Lyme. And right now we're kind of seeing any area that is higher incidence for Lyme is generally speaking going to be higher for anaplasma as well. Well, can you talk a bit about the kind of growth in cases of anaplasmosis that you've been seeing? So we just started uh, tracking cases on a national level this year. They're only nationally not notifiable as of this year. So specific case counts are a bit harder to detect, but we know how many individuals likely tested positive in former years. And back in the early 2000s, when we first started kind of seeing anaplasmosis in Canada, we were only getting a handful of cases. Um, so maybe one or two cases every year. And now we're looking at upwards of hundreds of cases of year, uh, a year in each of those provinces. Um, largely, this is due to those expanding um, tick populations, both moving into new geographical areas, as well as increasing the population in the same areas. And we are seeing kind of a spillover from the natural animal environment into the human system as well. Well, how concerned should people be? I think it's just a kind of general concern of when you're going outside and you're already thinking about Lyme, um, kind of shifting your perception to Lyme and other tick-borne diseases. And that's both um, for all of us as we go outside and enjoy the outdoors, as well as for health practitioners too. So what are the best ways to prevent getting either anaplasmosis or Lyme disease? What are the steps people might be able to take? So kind of your traditional tick prevention techniques, um, which is going to be wearing long sleeves, wearing long pants and tucking your socks into your pants, um, potentially wearing pre-treated clothes. If you can get them, they're commercially available and you can make them yourselves by um, pre-treating your clothes um, with an acaricide known as permethrin. You can also spray yourself with a normal insecticide. Any deep base insecticide will work well against ticks as well. Um, generally staying on well-groomed paths um, and walkways, so trying to not go through those high grassy areas or through wooded areas, as well as the biggest thing is going to be doing tick checks on yourself and your loved ones. Well, if you do find a tick on yourself, what do you do then? So the first thing is obviously remove it safely. Um, you want to be taking it out as close to the skin as possible. And then what you can do is snap a picture of that tick and upload it to eTick, which will tell you an identification of what tick that is, which will help base uh, how, how nervous you may be in your area of exposure, depending on the tick species that actually was attached to you. All right. Well, thank you very much for the information on this. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much.